We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us, talking about bees and beekeeping. Questions you may have. I know I get a lot sometimes on my Facebook page because I, I beekeep and I try to help people as they uh, go through it. Some people want to try, you know, uh, doing it themselves, but this guy knows much more about it than I am. He's the state apiarist, uh, and uh, Mike Studer basically monitors all the hives in the state of Tennessee. We were saying uh, this last caller about what the laws are. He's happy with the hive and wants to protect yeah. it there, but if you have a hive that you feel you want to get rid of, if it's a nuisance, I guess it's technically not against the law for you to go in and eradicate them and kill them, yeah. which is unfortunate if people do that because what do you prefer they do? Yeah, we prefer they call a beekeeper and have them come and get them. Um, have them if you've got them in yeah. the wall, have them come take them out of the wall if it's possible. Exterminators yeah. usually don't want any part of it anyway. They yeah. get stung yeah. and <laughs> they don't want to kill them. So you're going to have trouble getting an exterminator, but don't do that. Most yeah. beekeepers, and if you can't find one, call me. Most beekeepers are going to do it for free. I've done it. I've eradicated um, bees because I, I figure I get to keep the bees if I get them out. Yeah. Um, but two, I'm going to do it for free for you. I'm not going to charge you a cent. He has some charge. It depends on how much work it takes to get them out. Sure. You know, if it's just a swarm, most of them to come and just pick them up for free. You know, it's hanging right. on a tree or hanging on the side of your house, like scrape them off and put them in there. Yeah. Um, well, my but, neighbor Jimmy and I have been in a situation where it's been in a wall, and we've gone. And our rule of thumb is, look, we will remove the wood take the bee out, clean it out for you, but it's your job to rebuild yeah. everything. I'm not going to do that. Now, we did have, um, just a couple months ago, right downtown, was it on Fifth Avenue, Rick? There was a law office, and they would always have their meetings in the conference room, and they'd hear this buzzing, and they didn't know anything. And then all of a sudden, the walls started bleeding honey. <laughs> now, yep. I, I got to go look at it, but they had a beekeeper come in and remove it, but it was a huge hive built between the sheet wall and the outer rock, but perfect space for bees, really. Oh, yeah. They must have found an opening. How, that, is that pretty yeah. Yeah, it's kind of when they find weep holes and things like that in bricks and come in. They go on yeah. in, and, and I've heard it more than once that you see your walls bleeding. That's where it gets so much, and usually in the summer when it's full. And it's hot. And it's and hot. And the wax starts melting down. And yeah. that's, that's not a nice thing in your house. No, that can cause all kinds of damage. <laughs> so they had to close off the conference room, but to their credit, they didn't eradicate them and kill them. Yeah. They had a beekeeper come in and try to remove as many as he could safely. Yeah, even if you do, even if you've got them in a wall or something and you do kill them, um, then you've got to t still tear that wall out. Yeah. And, and that's the big thing because if you don't, uh, you've got the honey and you've got the wax in there. The bees aren't there to keep it at 95 degrees. It's just the temperature they keep it year round. Yeah. So in the summer, it's going to get hot. Yeah. It's going to melt down. All that honey is going to come through the wall. It's going to seep through. It's going to get on all your stuff. It's going to ruin stuff. You're going to get ants and roaches and all kinds of other bugs in the wall in there feeding on it. Yeah. Um, and once all the honey's gone, You've got the, the drawn comb in there, yep. which, you know, beeswax, if you put it in a candle and you light it, burns real slow. It burns for a long. You can have a little candle to mm -hmm. burn all day. Oh, yeah. But if you take that comb and you light it, it'll shoot a six-foot flame and be gone wow. in a few minutes. Yeah. So, you know, they've had incidences where squirrels or rats or mice have been in there feeding on the pollen that's in it and there's an electric line running through the oh, middle of it no, and they bite the it it spark fire. and the whole house burns down. How about that? You know, yeah. the, the, every year across the country we, we hear about a few cases like that where that's happened. You know, so, so you don't want to just kill them and leave it in there. You, yeah. if, once you, if you have to kill them, you still have to tear everything out. So if you're going to tear everything out anyway, you might as well have somebody come in and get the bees and save them because you know, we're losing them. the bees. And it's a good thing. And then, and then find out where they came in and seal it off because yeah. they'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll come back. Yeah, they'll come back because they'll smell that. Yeah, a new beehive yeah, will new come beehive in. new beehive will be in there next spring if you don't seal it. Uh, you know, I know you're not a, a scientist in the sense of, you know, the, the, the medicinal qualities and stuff, but can we talk a little bit about honey? Sure. <laughs> just about mm -hmm. honey. And the honey that comes out of a comb, okay, after it's been properly capped and everything and it's all that and you, and some, many people harvest it and yeah. we'll talk about where you can get local honey, but it's ready to eat right out of the cut, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's not, you don't have to pasteurize it. You don't, no. coming out, what is honey when it comes out? Is it essentially bee spit? Basically, yeah. <laughs> it does, sounds yeah. appetizing. It sounds it? appetizing, okay. yeah. But basically but what they do is they've, they've got a honey stomach. They take the nectar in, and they pull it out, and they put it on their tongue. And their tongue actually has five different parts, and it spreads out like this. And they'll sit there, and they'll fan, and they'll draw the moisture out of it. And they'll take it from something that's a nectar that's maybe 5% nectar and 95% water, and in order to be honey, it's got to be 18.6% water or less. So, 
you know, it's they're, what they're doing is taking all the all the water out of it. Yeah. And you don't want to heat it. You don't want to pasteurize it. Yeah. You know, um, the, you don't you don't want to ultra filter it and take all the pollen out of it. If you're wanting it for medicinal purposes, some people say it helps with allergies. With allergies. I, mean, I, I think uh, it, I don't think it hurts. I, it doesn't cure my allergies, but no. I think it helps a bit. It, if you're allergic to the to what the bees are going to, yeah, um, it's possible that it could help. Help you build up a tolerance, yeah, a tolerance if you're eating yeah, it if on you're a regular eating. basis. Now I wouldn't go out and buy. Um, pollen from a local beekeeper and sit there and eat a cup of it right away. Oh man, do no, not. Do not do, do that. that. Do uh, for not. one thing, it will give you extreme buzz. Oh yeah, um, but it could also it could break also you, kill you Yeah, it could kill you. Um, um, if, you have, if you're allergic to some, some of that. What you, you know, they say you're supposed to do is you know, take, you know, a couple pellets at a time and start well, what you're talking about, you beekeepers will actually it. harvest pollen. All, yes. now, if you would separate for the, the viewers the idea of, okay, you have the nectar and pollen. And when you look in a hive sometimes, you'll see some of the comb has, you know, the brightly covered pollen packed in yeah. there. And then others with, that has had been capped and has honey in it. The difference between the nectar and the pollen and what the bees use it for. Yeah, the, the, the nectar is the, is the fluid, it's the attractant for the bees. For the flower, okay, it's you know, like to, a to, sweet to, yeah, to get sugar to get them to come to in. it to pollinate. Uh, the pollen is the extra pollen that comes back with the bees. Their body is covered with little branched hairs, and it gets caught on their hairs. They bring it back to the colony, and then they scrape it all off. And well, actually, now, they scrape they it off before they fly back. Now, will they sometimes store some of it also? Yeah, they, and they, they, and they, they, they the store it. For? They use it for their protein source. Okay. Um, yeah, the pollen's their protein source. The, sh the honey is their carbohydrate source. Okay. So they, they use both of those to feed their feed their young and feed everybody. In there, yeah. and that's yeah, you know, it's, it's just their balanced diet. Very, and they, very they cool. need, that's one of the nutritional things too. If, if you look at it and you look at one and you see nothing but the same color pollen, mm -hmm. yeah, that's not a very varied diet. That's like you going out and eating nothing but potatoes. Yeah, you want a very for, for a long time. Color. You know, you, you want a very diet, and they need a very yeah. Diet. In my yeah. hive, I'll see reds, yellows, and all this other greens, stuff. Oranges, greens, oranges, purples. And we should say too, when you <coughs> harvest honey at times, um, I'll pull up my you know when I harvest. And again, by the way, the bees work hard to do this. And when we harvest honey, I always make sure that I if we take any, I only take half and I leave the other yeah. half for them and the rest. I never take it all. The bees have to have something to live on as well. Yeah. They'll have maybe two supers on there. And if they're both full, I'll take one. Yeah. The other one stays alone and then they get the rest of the season to fill up that other one again. We don't touch it because they get at least half of it. Yeah, but yeah, there's no reason for somebody to be greedy and take all no, of the honey. Not, well, yeah, and, and your bees might I mean, just die that winter. Well, there's some people that do that. They'll take all the honey and then they'll feed them back corn syrup. Mm. Or um, yeah. sugar water for the winter, and then the bees eat all, eat all that up over the winter, and it's it's not as good for them. It doesn't have all the nutrients. Yeah, in I've it. never it's, done It's better that. to, to leave the that. honey in there. Don't get uh, I'm not a big just... proponent of using sugar syrup and corn syrup to feed them. I'd rather have them use their. That even never even occurred <coughs> to me, and yeah. I, I agree with you on that. But um, it is interesting when you go into a hive and you have that super. You'll pull one, two supers from the front, and it might be a real amber light honey color yeah. and in the back in the same hive you'll pull it up and there'll be real dark, real dark. colored honey yeah. in the comb you spin it out now when I do it and I spin it out through a centrifuge I mix it all together with me I don't yeah. separate it but what's the difference in the colors the plant that it came from and sometimes yeah. there's a subtle difference in taste between the two there are real distinct difference in taste yeah some depending of them. I mean, oh, if yeah. like blackberry if you go out to the Pacific North Northwest yeah. where they've got a whole lot of blackberries the honey actually tastes like blackberries okay now in Knoxville area and East Tennessee sourwood sourwood it's Boy, just that, finished blooming yeah, yeah, but they didn't get much this year because of the, all the rains that is a distinct taste which yeah. is not one of my favorites It's almost more molassy to me yeah, but it's got like a wang to it yeah, yeah but still end. I'll take honey 10 out of 10 times over molasses yeah, you want, you want local stuff too, and, and yeah. support the local beekeepers. Well, and we we've, we had a new law go through, or not a new law. We had a, a rule that we put through last year, and we got rid of the law that that said it had to be 100% pure honey, and put in a rule that gives us some some more teeth to go after the people that that would adulterate honey. Oh, I, so some people who sell <coughs> it are, are mixing corn syrup with mixing honey or something. Syrup. Um, we've, we've had issues really? with that, yeah. Okay, so and, and, and also um, imported honey. You know, when when you say it's local honey, now it has to be local honey oh, because good, the yeah. rule gives us some teeth to go well, after somebody for that. And because local honey, if you've noticed, uh, is a little more expensive than what you're going to buy at one of the grocery stores. And it's I, I believe it's totally better for you. And the folks I work with, and in, in, I learned from the Wilson County yeah. beekeepers, they're great. And there's people that have far larger hives than me that I know sell it, and they're legit. Yeah. And it's wonderful stuff. We'll tell you more about that. Listen, we've got to take a break. We'll come back. Michelle and others who are on hold, we'll get to more of your phone calls right after this. Have you nailed some people?